tonight we have a very special guest. Karen Fisher is going to come up and talk to us. She has uh, been very successful, well known in lifestyles. That, I got to say, I'm, well, I'm very excited to hear this presentation. Karen's got some great things to, sh to show you. Let's get her right there in the middle. Right in the middle, okay. Right. But, but Karen, I got to start off this okay. way. Uh, I was trading emails with David. David Fisher, by the way, folks may know, he's another lifestyles uh, life changer like me presents many times here in Texas. He has promised me that he's going to behave. Whatever. Now, um, you now, do know who I'm married to, yeah. right? Well, we can pull him out in the hallway if he gets a real problem. Now, I've attended his two day. He makes fun of you a lot. <laughs> this, payback, is, this is payback time. <laughs> so, Karen, tell us a little about who you are. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you, guys. Does anybody not know Karen, actually? I mean, can we get a hand, show of hands? There's going to be, Hi. yeah, there we go. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm Karen Fisher, and I am Cuban-Korean descent. Uh, my, actually, I'm first-generation American, America. So um, when I was a kid, my mom always told us to be proud of the country that you live in. So uh, when I was a nurse, I wor worked as a nurse in the civilian sector for about 10 years. And then one day I told my husband, I wanted to join the Air Force. 36 years old, mind you, but I still made it happen. So, <laughs> thank you. Anybody who else is a veteran or actively serving, please raise your hand, because so thank grateful. You thank you, guys. Such a privilege to have been able to put that uniform on and represent my country. Oh, who has the clicker? I do. Oh, you, you do? Click or you want to click? I'm clicking. You're clicking? <laughs> I'm not ready to click, though. You're not ready not, to click? So it oh. says Karen, major in the U.S. Air I was, Force. Yes. Registered nurse mom, adventurer in... Nerd. Uh, nerd. It's, All right, there So you Karen, go. you got, uh, there's a very special picture in here that wasn't taken very long ago. Tell us about oh, the yeah. one at the bottom no. there. Yeah. Um, oh, with Stan Lee, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> the one, on, it was the one with, it looks, one with it looks the white chilly. stuff. Uh, actually, um, I love traveling, and Lifestyles has provided that ability to travel. So I just came from Kilimanjaro uh, in Africa last month, and I successfully summited. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. It was, it was amazing. And I didn't go. What? And I didn't go. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get real, you'd stay down at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell us why you joined Lifestyles. Oh, wow. Um, well, uh, we were Dave Ramsey, and we live by that, you know, if you didn't buy it cash, you didn't buy it at all. So back in 2008, 2009 timeframe, uh, we lost about six figures in, <laughs> I'm sorry, squirrel. We lost about six <laughs> figures in stock, in our stock portfolio. So <clears throat> we were freaking out, and I was active duty, so I couldn't, I could only earn what I could earn. So David was Mr. Mom, and all he would do is play video games and throw Cheerios <laughs> on the floor to feed my kids. So I was like, you gotta figure out how to do it. So um, one night he says, hey honey, we're gonna go out on a date. And he took me to a case study. I was like, what the hell is this? You big spender, you. <laughs> yeah, so here I am on a Thursday night going to case study. And then um, over the weekend, I'm like, yay, I got two days off. No, he dragged me to the two-day <laughs> seminar. So this whole weekend, I'm, I was super reluctant. I was still active duty, didn't have any desire. But we still went ahead and we joined. And just like you, we went right into multifamily. And um, so I told David, I go, babe, this is all you. So he, for the first uh, few years, he did everything. And I just was content being an officer in the Air Force. But within two years of joining Lifestyles, he actually replaced my income in the Air Force. So he told me that, um, hey, you know, now that, you're, now that you're, your income is replaced, you can go ahead and retire. And I told them, don't tell me what to do. You're not gonna tell me. I'm gonna decide. I love, I love working and I love serving my country, so I continue to do that. Awesome, so then it says, uh, is that 70K or 700K? What, what do you got there? 70,000. 70, 70K, yeah. so you started with 70K, and, and, then, and uh, now it's now 11 million? And now we're at 11 million. million. What's yeah. the rate of return on that? 
I don't know. It's pretty high. He's a numbers guy. He can yeah. figure it out. Four million percent. Go make you later. So you, did a, you did that all on one deal? Oh, gosh, no. Um, mind you, we joined April 2009, so it's a slow and steady wins the race, and that's what we did. And uh, we're still, we're just still chopping away, and we love it. Love Looks it. like you got a few deals up there. Just a few. Just a few. Little, little, little activity. <laughs> well, you yeah. Oh, oh, can you go, go back? back? Yeah. yeah, awesome. So, actually, since joining in 2009, we have uh, bought and sold over 50 properties throughout Texas. And um, there are the ones on the um, in yellow, actually, we also are in back passive investors in. And the ones in red are the ones that we self-manage. Um, the there are three highlighted, but the last, the two highlighted, the ones that are closed, we just recently bought those uh, within six months. Those are the one in Natalia. In Natalia and VFW one in Boulevard. VFW on the south side. <laughs> in Santa Ana. <laughs> yep, south side of San Antonio. So tonight we're going to learn a little bit about a property that you bought in Seguin. Is that right? Yes. So we are, we've already had one Seguin property. Yeah. Another Seguin Victor. Property. He's not listening anymore, but he should have. Michael Juanito. And, uh, <laughs> he, may, he, may be, he may be on the live stream. We don't know. I don't know. Maybe. But um, <laughs> maybe we're neighbors. Um, so this is 321 Blanks. It's in Seguin. This is a tertiary market. It's just outside of San Antonio. Actually, um, when David told me that we bought a property, he sent me the the photo, and he said, honey, this is the poop box we just bought. So... <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> but it's all right, because I love it. Uh, this is a value play, and um, Greg is going to go over that over the weekend, but easy peasy, just it's a fixer-upper. So that's what we bought. You can see with the purchase price and rehab, the total was 570000 So cash out of pocket for us, they required 25%, so we put out 170000 I know a lot of people don't have 170,000. Of course, we built up to that. But um, as I mentioned, David, when we first started, he was a lead. So he also had investors that uh, invested in his deals at 25,000. So if you have 25,000, you too can invest in a similar property like this. Before you go off in the slide, I just yeah. want to make sure. Cash out of pocket, 170,000, but up above you had the rehab in those numbers. So I'm assuming it was 170,000 and the re some of the rehabs in the loan, and so that's yes. for everything. Yes, correct. Yep. That is correct. Yep, yep. So, oh, you want to go back a minute? Yeah, sure. Sweet. So wait, oh shoot, I'm blind. Hold on. <laughs> oh, okay, I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Sorry. So th these are the uh, these are the financials whenever you took over. Huh? Oh my God, yes. These are so stellar. Um, I swear, I think that the, the seller's agent just put something together and put it on graph paper to make it look legit. But, um, it kind of looks like a spreadsheet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so professional. Like, wow. Um, but these were actual, if you want to go back, yeah. these were actual rents. These oh, were $300 and $360 for two and three bedroom apartments. Is that, that's that's what you typically rent for here in yeah, Seguin, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it was insane. And rents in that area for that type of a property was over at least at least 1000 So, wow. I mean, it, this, huge, this yeah. owner, yeah. Sometimes this, you find lazy landlords that they just, they don't want to have a vacancy ever, so they'll do stupid stuff like that. This was epically mismanaged, and um, he didn't run it in the red, man. He ran it in the crimson. It was so, <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. All right, now we can go. Thank you. Um, so at TakeOver, if you can see, there's very little income coming in, and just the expenses were just as close. But because we had a loan, we were we didn't have any NOI at all. NOI stands for net operating income. Net operating which, income. We have some again, new people here. Yep. Oh yes, sorry. <laughs> it's a cash. It's the it's, case study. It's a case study. Yep. I mean, it's the. We'll so we're learning all yeah. about that. You'll He's learn gonna all about learn it. NOI I just want to get yes, yeah. yes. I, I hope I already learned it. But I will, <laughs> <laughs> I will Damn, teach you're it. teaching. <laughs> I will teach it this weekend. You know what I meant. <laughs> So, so it, it was bleeding cash whenever you took it over. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, because of our experience, we took over properties that were similar, so we knew what to expect. 
But even when I first started, um, I was scared. I mean, what does a nurse know about renting an apartment? So the beauty of what Lifestyles teaches you is you don't, you're not doing this on your own. There's no reason to, as people say, you know, make mistakes to learn from them. Forget that crap, man. Just okay. go right to being successful. And that's what the mentors and the operations consultants, they do. They help you be successful. So that's why I'm so grateful for what Lifestyles has done for us. Awesome. All righty. So, so this is uh, after you've already got it kind of stabilized there, huh? Pretty much, yep. Yeah, yep. Awesome. That's what it looks like now. And as Odin likes to call it, it went from hood to good. So <laughs> that's, that's great. That's my buddy. <laughs> so obviously you can see that the income went went up. Our expenses are, are about average. And then um, NOI, we finally have some NOI coming in. But the great thing is is we got monthly cash flow. It's 5,200, so just to make it easy, 5,000 per month, multiply that times 12, that's $60,000 a year tax-free. That's awesome. Yeah, that's like... And you bought it for 570 and it says Total it's 570. Yep. 1.37142857 million. Wow, we got it out of the penny. I love yeah. that. That's, the, that's, <laughs> the that's a David that's Fisher move right there. So that's roughly $800,000 of equity you have now. And how much did we start with? How much did we get cash out of pocket? One, uh, 170. 170. 170. Who would like to do that? Does that sound Wait, good? I want to tell you, I wanna tell you one yeah. thing. All right, for you guys, and, and again, Greg will teach it, but that cash on cash return is 38%. So the numbers may not make sense for new folks, but I wanna kinda give you a, a little bit of an idea of how it is. Is think about if you, if I invested my 170,000 into a CD, how much that CD is gonna pay? It, at most is 5%. So would you rather invest in a CD at 5% or invest in a property like this that's gonna give you that 38%? Yeah. That's awesome. right. And also, your CD is not going to go up yeah, in value. Eight hundred dollars. Heck no. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Next, please. So then, um, tell us what you did. Oh well, actually, that's that's Odin. Our our why of why we join Lifestyles. Everybody has their own why, and our why is our family. And so, our, that's my youngest, and that's Odin, and he's been around it since he was three years old. He's seventeen now. So. Raise your hand, Odin. <laughs> Hi. And um, the great thing is, is that now I I dictate my own life, so I'm actually his homeschool teacher, and this is his class. So he's actually learning real world experiences, not preparing for a test. Looks like a finance class behind there. It sure is. <laughs> or algebra. Yep. Or some kind. Fun, fun. <laughs> All right. Um, befores and afters. I. You know, it doesn't scare me. That's really all cosmetics. Um, but the great thing about it is our in-house team, we have a template, and they know the color scheme, the countertops, our appliances, flooring. They just, it's basically wash, rinse, repeat. So there's no question, it's bang, bang, bang. And same thing with the bathroom, you have the tile surround, vanity, the fixtures, the mirrors, everything. It's easy, it makes turnover. You're mitigating that longer turnover in, in rehab time. Do you charge pet fees for the giraffe? <laughs> Maybe. It's, a, it's an emotional support giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's messed up. <laughs> so you brought this one in 2022? April, so April 2022, so it's not it even two years old yet. It quite two years yet. No. But, but uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a big, been a, a big change over two years. Heck yeah. Well, year one, there was nothing. But uh, <laughs> year two, I like the numbers there. Income went up to almost 140. Our expenses did go up, but it's because we fixed stuff. So the, I mean, it was so horrible that we even had one of my residents, and she's a legacy resident, she said, I can't believe how this place looks. It, it was always so run down and it just looks so beautiful that she even takes her own time and does stuff around the property. She has that pride and she loves where she lives. So, Isn't that cool when you yeah. make a bunch of money and your residents are so grateful for what yeah. you put into it? I love it. Yeah. No, I love it because it's, we're all helping the community also. Uh, yeah, she right. told me that that area was known to be pretty ghetto 
and her words, not mine. But um, yeah, and it was nice to hear that she's so grateful that it now doesn't look that way. So. Yeah, and that's the lifestyle's model. I mean, we don't, we're not slumlords. Nope. We fix it, we make it clean and functional, make it exactly. a better community, we try to community, and we take it from, from hood to, to good. good. <laughs> I wanted to leverage what you just said though, Robert, because there's really essentially two business plans you see out there in the apartment space. There's the one we don't do, which is where you get landlords that cut costs, and they just focus on cutting costs, and eventually you end up at $300 a month rents making no money because it's a slum, right? We put the money in, we fix it up. Sometimes that means our expenses go up. We're not about focus on cutting costs. We're focusing on making best product, best price, so our income's going up, and you get results like Karen and David had here. Yep, exactly. All right, that's our, oh, okay, so this, again, as Robin mentioned, this property's not even two years old yet, or we've, uh, we've had it for two years yet, but if we decided to sell the property, it is now worth almost 1.4 million. And um, so if we pay off that loan and we pay off what cash out of pocket, we'd end up with 815,000 plus the 64,000 a year cash flow is an $880,000 uh, is what we'll get. So that's just barely better than a CD. It went from just, 5% yeah. to 479%. You think? Just a little. Just <laughs> So I, I think that we should probably give you a round of applause, 479 percent of the time. So when you guys go buy a stock or you buy a mutual fund, what ability do you have to make that stock or mutual fund go up? None. Your only strategy is hope, right? Yeah. Did you do the math ahead of time? Did you have an idea where the rents would end up when you fixed it up? Uh, yeah, because I, I did market rents and I looked to see and then we fixed it up. Well, see, first of all, even those. Just at the beginning, I got them on our leases, and I said, "Hey, here's the letter. Hi, where you? You know, because I couldn't going get up. anywhere to spend get three hundred or even five hundred dollar a yeah. month rent. And then you knew about how much it was going to take to fix it up, right? Probably within a small percentage. Well, David and I, we partner, so he does acquisition, sales, and rehab, and then I do operations, and so we t collectively figure out what what the numbers will come so out. So what to. I want to get to is, was this a guess? that you were going to make 479% or were you relying on hope that we'd get there or did you pretty no, much know that's hope. where you're going to no. get you're going to get We figured out the numbers have to make sense. And and just like Victor, he lives in Miami and he's he invested here in in San Antonio or in Seguin. So, you know, it's the same concept. You want to, you know, you don't have to live you live where you want to live and you buy where the numbers make sense. And for me, it's concrete. You don't look at Shades of gray, the numbers have to make sense. And if they don't make sense, you walk away. There's another property. Yeah. So don't get emotional. You want it, this is a business. You want to look at it in that concept. But there's not another property that's going to make over like 200%. I mean, if this is the only one, right? No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one. There's been more? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no big deal. 200%. It's just like a small number for y'all. Yeah. They're like potato chips. Oh my God, yes. When I first started, so David wanted me to get involved since day one, and I was like, like I said, I was like, don't tell me what to do, dude. So, but I, when I finally started getting involved, it was so exciting, and I couldn't believe it, and I just, I just wanted to keep going. So I rented out the four, first fourplex, and then I was like, ooh, all right, what's the next property? And I just kept going, and it was so much fun, and it's been fun for all these years. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So two years to make 880, when you were in the Air Force, you must have made near 440, right? Oh man, I was no. so killing it at <laughs> freaking 65,000 a year. <laughs> but it wasn't, for me, it wasn't about that. It's, I, it, was, it was such a privilege to put on that uniform and represent my country. So it wasn't, for me, it wasn't money. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Go Vets! <laughs> So how did you increase the NOI? And NOI is net operating income. That's yep. how we determine value. Yep. And if you guys don't um, know, come to the two-day. Yeah. And again, they'll, they'll explain all that over the weekend. Uh, geez, bump up my rents. I mean, that, that right there is like a no-brainer. Oh, I forgot to mention, this stellar previous owner had a, an on-site manager that lived on the for property 12 for a 12 unit. <laughs> okay. Guess how much rent she paid? Just throw out numbers, y'all. Zero. <laughs> Freaking zero. Oh my God, I was like, <laughs> hello. He ran into crimson. So I got her on a lease. 
She's like, oh my gosh, I have to pay rent. Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> she only paid for two months and then she left, but you know, that's a whole other story. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, we increased the rents and we got them at market rents and it was great. And then um, we implemented rubs. It's, we need to tell everybody well, what, what rubs is. Huh? There's people that don't know what no, rubs no, is. No, 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 I know. He's gonna tell you over the weekend. But <laughs> it's utilities. He'll, he'll go in through the whole minutia of it. Um, and then, but the biggest thing is, unlike Kevin, we have still have some meat on the bones on that property. So <laughs> if a new, a new property, a new person wanted to buy this, there's still potential to make more money, to build up that, NO, increase that NOI, because there's still a legacy unit, meaning the original unit, and uh, there's that potential for creating storage or laundry facility on site. So there's still room for growth. And on the two day, you guys go through the, all of the different ways to add, add income. There's only like six posted here, but there's a whole page of it there. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, just trying to keep it, keep it easy. All right, so how has lifestyles changed your life? <sighs> you know, um, no. Don't you do it. <laughs> Actually, um, it, it taught me that it empowered me. I, I never thought that I can run my own business, be my own boss, and not and be able to all the efforts that I put in. I'm not making money for the man. I'm not that worker bee. I'm actually able to be my own boss. And if I wanted to go to my kids field trip, I could. I didn't have to wait to get permission or approval. So that was huge. If you wanted to climb a mountain. Oh, hell yeah. There you go. <laughs> go to Africa, whatever. <laughs> um, I don't know why David's name is in there and why his, <laughs> he had to put his two cents, but okay. Um, yeah. I feel like I've heard you say that before. Don't tell me what to do. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, well, okay, so, you know, uh, <laughs> don't tell me what to do is actually, um, whenever he pisses me off, I make up names on an LLC, and actually one of the properties that we just bought is owned by Don't Tell Me What To Do. So, oh yeah, there's, there are many, there are many, yeah. All right, tell, tell us about your goals, what you guys gonna do short term, long term. <sighs> I need to get him on a vacation. Um, well, okay, yeah, so I did, I did hike Kilimanjaro. I've hiked Machu Picchu and Rainbow Mountain in Peru, and then I did a backpack in northern Spain with my brother. So if you can tell, I like to be active. And, but my husband, he says if there's exercise involved, that is not a vacation. So I can't, I can't do that. Um, but I would love for him, and I, I want to experience all those different beautiful places this world has with you. <laughs> Something other than FaceTime. Right? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so I definitely want to experience that um, with him. Um, because I've been able, we're financially free, I'm able to do things that I've wanted to, that I put on the back burner, and now I'm actually able to do them. So I've been studying Korean for three years. You can't tell because I still talk like I'm a toddler, but you know, all right, but hold on, I got something for y'all. Oh. All right, shoot. And Randy, if you're watching me, I'm sorry to butcher the freaking uh, Korean. <laughs> it means it's Jejong Jokuro, Jeyuro Yun. And that essentially loosely translates to, it's not the money, it's the lifestyle. That's so. what I thought you said. I love it. That's what I thought you said. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then um, short term, Odin, he turns 18 in the summer. Yay! <laughs> I know! <laughs> Woo! Yes, because, guess what, buddy? Here you go. You're paying rent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, because he's, you know, he's really shown interest in everything, and so he's, we're gonna get him involved in the business. Actually, we just wanna hand him the business so we can go travel. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> um, Long-term goals is continue to just lead by example and just instill those 
core values of integrity and work ethics and excellence, and I want him to be a future leader of the apartment industry, so why not continue that? Um, I want to buy a skating rink, maybe? <laughs> actually, shut up, I'm not a type A, I'm a half, half. <laughs> no, I, I don't wanna buy one, um, but I do three. roller skate a lot. That's my other passion, like literally almost five times a week. So wow. I'm going skating tomorrow, rollercade, four o'clock. Anybody wanna join me? I'm there. So, you got um, one taker. One taker? <laughs> Woo! Be there. <laughs> and um, truly, <sighs> lifestyles, we've become family. And, and I mean, like Trisha, I've gone to her house and stayed over her house. The Flores family, my, my lovely Flores family, I literally have gone over and sleep over for the whole weekend at their house. Yay! <laughs> Shut up, babe. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I'm like, honey, I'm staying over the floor is this. Okay, bye. And so, <laughs> but I mean, it, everything. It's like Sylvia, I've gone to her parties. It's, we, you, this is not just people wanting to be successful, which there's nothing wrong with that, but it's that we've become a family. And it, it just, I'm just so grateful for this family that we have. And so my goal is to always see the new members help them somewhere or another to for them to attain their financial goal. That's really a long-term goal for me. It's just I want to hear your story. Everybody has a story, and I want to hear your story, and I want to hear how successful you guys have become. And that really is a big, big part of it too. Just making friends, and you know, this I wouldn't have met anybody in here if, if I was still in oil and gas. And so you get to meet different people from different places, and I mean, it's just it enriches your your friendship environment. And if you don't, if you haven't had a chance to experience come out to uh, the little chicken and pickle afterwards and just see how everybody interacts. So, especially you new guys that haven't been part of it. Come on out. Yeah. So who is on your team? Oh my gosh. Everybody, <laughs> everybody. I mean, it's <laughs> Robert. We had Robert. I had the J team, Jody, Jillian, <laughs> Joey, Joe. Um, I remember when I first started, again, I, I knew nothing, nothing about real estate. And so I remember when I first started uh, getting phone calls, I asked Jody, I reached out to Jody and I asked her, oh my God, how do I, how do I answer these, these prospect calls? So I wrote down a script and she helped me. And then I had other members help me with just, hey, stage the unit this way. We all, because we had that, common mindset, that same mindset, we all were there to just continue to help each other grow. We didn't want to see failure. We, it's an abundance mentality here, and it's such a weird thing to have people want to help you that you don't even know, that they're so willing to just reach out and give you a hand up, that it's, it's just amazing, but I'm, I'm so grateful. So the Jays, and then Jeff, he's not a J, but he sounds like a J. Like so Jeff, <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff, and then um, Doug and Kim. So that's multifamily, and then operations consultants. Oh my God! To this day, I will ask, and I feel so stupid because you think that you would know the answers, and you don't. You're never gonna know everything. So I have people there that have gone through stuff that I've never experienced and are there to help me answer my questions. So I love you, uh, operations is, consultants. Is Teresa still here? I don't know, but she damn it, here. she sure. should have been. She I just like, gave her props. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Um, and vendors. Um, Rich, Richard from um, AMP Lending and Louis, my Louis Palomo, my insurance guy. He knows the stuff, which is great. So, uh, but you know, you, you need a team in order to be successful, and this is a great team to have on board. Awesome. So, do you guys have any questions? We yeah. First questions. of all, give her a big hand. That was a great presentation. <laughs> and thank you too, Robert. Appreciate it. But you, you got a chance to ask questions of a multimillionaire, so right. fire away, guys.
So, for, so yeah, the for question those was, online, whenever you yeah. first took over, what was the occupancy? How much? How many people did you lose whenever you raised the rents to 1100 bucks, and how long did it take to refill it? All right, pretty easy. Obviously, it was 100% when we, when we got it because they're not going to find $300 rents for three-bedroom. But when I finally got them on the lease and I gave them that rent increase, I only lost one rent resident. They saw the work that we were doing and they liked the, the look of it and they were willing to go ahead and move in. So it, it's Seguin, it's a smaller town and so people talk and they heard and they would come. And our, um, we were able to fill it pretty fast, probably within, as, and mind you now, it's also as fast as I had an available unit. So we went from the, uh, you know, try to fix it as fast as we can. And we were able to fill it probably eventually, like once everything was turned within six months. Yeah. Was I, did I answer your other part? That was two or three parts. Okay. <laughs> What's up, Sylvia? Was this a property that nobody wanted? I think so. This so, was actually a property somebody else tagged before me, but didn't do it and we did. So it, within Lifestyles, we have a tagging system so that we don't compete with each other. And David just said that that property was originally tagged by another member, but for whatever reason, they decided not to buy it. So the Fishers picked it up. Sucks to be them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now they're sitting at home going, no! <laughs> yeah, so was anybody in the room? Not willing to raise your hand? <laughs> what, what husband? What was the lowest occupancy of any property you took over? What was the lowest occupancy of any, any property? Any property? Yeah. Oh, frick. There has to be a zero in there somewhere. It could be a W. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's zero percent. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't the, get the, much this is the that. crap that my husband puts me through. <laughs> Honey, what LOC do you have available? That, that's his MO. And I'm like, oh, shoot. You know We're buying fine. another property. <laughs> 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 so I had to have like all these pro, uh, LOCs ready to go. Um, does anybody want to hear the names of different pro, of LLCs I have? Sure. All right. Give Let's see. Best three. Huh? Give us your best three. The best three. Um, boats and hose. <laughs> 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 okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I know, but it's H O S E F Y I. <laughs> um, uh, okay, for that 479%, we have that technical term in the industry that if you make earn over uh, over 100%, it's called what? Pee in your pants. Come on, man, give it up. <laughs> Pee in your pants excited. And so, yes, I named uh, one of our properties Pee in your pants excited. What and happens when you have to do an eviction, talk to the judge? Oh, know. my God, that was funny. Yeah, I had, I had a property that was in eviction, and they're calling the doc, and I'm like, pee in your pants, present! And he's just like, grinned. It was the funniest thing. This is the judge. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think he knew whether to take me serious or not, but <laughs> hey, man, it's on the docket. <laughs> uh, what's the third one? Let's see. But Daddy Snacks. Yeah, that's boring. What, you're mad at me. what Dave's Oh, mad at me. oh. Yeah, so um, he, he likes to post on Facebook, and he always writes, oh, I bought this, and I bought that, and I did this. And so my response is always, hey, it's we, not I. So I put, it's we, not I. Yep. So these LLC names are therapeutic for you. Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. That's my payback. Where do I sleep Oh, on the couch again. <laughs> But yeah, you know, why not have fun in life? And I have fun through LLCs. What's up, Joe? Oh, what's up, Kathy? I have a question. Um, what are your residents say whenever they write pee in your pants excited LLC? The question is, what do the <laughs> residents say whenever they have to write pee in your pants excited on their check to pay? I think they got used to it, but um, <laughs> when. When I first had um, Big Daddy Snaps, the girl was writing, and she go, and I said, she's like, who do I write it out to? And she, I say, oh, Big Daddy Snaps. And she's like, Big Daddy Snaps? <laughs> and no lie, that's so, I, they chuckle. And the funniest thing is I, I've trained my residents, so they'll take their money orders to Chase Bank and deposit it, and they tell me, they can't find pee in your pants on, on the thing. I was like, there's no other company name, pee in your pants excited. So, yeah, fun, fun. Have you named any properties in Spanish or with a bad word? 
No, I no, I don't. I keep it. Um, yeah, Esperanza, and that's the one in Houston. And um, after that, no. <laughs> one and done. About, like Mount Kilimanjaro. <laughs> how about the questions online? We oh. have we have an important question oh, online. God. Is don't tell me what to do LLC going to be an LLC name? Oh, it already is. It already and is. it's already actually already one of the properties that we just bought within six months. So, yeah. They're also going to go visit? Oh, maybe. Could be. Could be. Maybe. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yes. A member is asking if uh, you needed to evict a lot of the residents that you um, inherited. <laughs> hmm. Um, some of them. In, in general, not just this property or in general or this property in particular? Just on this yeah. one. Oh, on this one? No. Um, well, we had to evict later on, but they, the rents were already up. Like they had already been increased and um, they didn't like the new sheriff that was in town. I wasn't going to tolerate nonsense and you're going to abide by the lease. If I'm abiding by the lease, it's a, it's a team, you know? So... I made sure that that happened. I set the precedence, and if they didn't like it, then you know, sorry. And is it hard to evict in Sigi? Oh no, I love it. <laughs> they actually respect the lease, and it's wonderful there. So, we're gonna buy more property there, babe. Dustin, what's up, Dustin? You only do fixer uppers, or do you ever buy the easy to run yield place? Okay. Do you, do you only do fixer uppers, or do you buy product that is already ready to go? And why do you choose? And why? Choose? Okay, well, <clears throat> a few years ago, um, David and I actually looked at a 70T unit, uh, which was actually right by the skating rink, funny enough. <laughs> but, um, and so I always drive by that and I was like, oh. Um, but it looked so much like a yield play. And again, he'll explain it over the weekend. And I was bored. I personally, I love to see the transformation. Um, and so, I like that, but for us at first, fixer uppers, they don't make any money, but once it's stabilized, it's a cash cow. So that's another good reason why we like it. We just enjoy that growth of the property. Yes? How many properties do you put for each LLC and why? Each, each property has its own entity. And why? And why? Say, yeah, legalities, but we don't want to, we don't, we want to have that property, just have that one, that entity, and then there's no, there's not a bunch of them. Yeah, we don't want to commingle with different properties and anything like that. It just makes it easier-ish. Now, when you're first starting out, uh, oftentimes we will say you don't, you don't necessarily need to do that. I think probably most important is getting your insurance right. Actually, I, probably the most important thing is operating your property well. If you operate your property well and it's best product, best price, you're not going to get the lawsuits. If you do get lawsuits, next line of defense is actually insurance, and then usually LLCs are the third or fourth line of defense. Just one last oh. question online. Oh. Oh, the, la the last one online is, um, did the 170 k include the money you reserved for costs incurred for debt relief while you were filling the apartment back up? So did the 170 include your negative carry for the time that you had negative income? Husband. You had just one month of negative carry, right? So yeah. We, we made it look like it took a year, really. Yeah. yeah. That what he said. <laughs> the trans the transformation was so quick. The, the, the uh, leases were only one month long. So yeah. she went. Tell them how fast you went from 300 to 900 for legacy right away. Oh. How how fast did you go from 300 to the initial 900 for your legacy right after we, without doing anything to the their yeah needs? after we got them on the TAA leases and my biggest thing is I always say you know hey I'm the manager and I need to just the rents are gonna stay the same we're gonna put you on month to month the only thing I just need to reflect the new owner's name on the lease so once I get them on there then I'm able to go ahead and issue that rent increase notice. So I gave them about a month or two months. And they asked, one person asked me, and I said, one of the residents asked me, and I said, yeah, eventually it'll go up. And she's like, oh, okay, but you know. So I wasn't, I was transparent. I didn't hide anything. I, I was, they asked me, I'm gonna answer them. But probably within two months, I was able to. And 
they didn't really give pushback. Uh, again, the only there was just one resident that left. Well, I imagine it's still hard to find something for nine hundred dollars on a three bedroom anywhere, really. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. How did you renovate that with only $170,000? That's a David Fisher question, but come, we also have an in-house team. Tell you all about it. Yeah, we have an in-house team. So it typically costs us about 10k a door. Yeah. If you, if you didn't hear him, he says it costs about 10k a door to rehab. Yeah. So you, so you created yourself and you can do Did you was do the, the work was yourself? The GC, yeah. Did you GC it yourself? We have like We have a team. Have yeah. Yeah, so we have a revolving team, and they go, okay, this property they got to work on this time, and then let's go to the next property, and then the next property. So we have our own in-house team. And that's why I say we have that template. They know the model that we like. It has to be clean, functional, modern looking. And so, again, just wash, rinse, repeat. Every property, no so questions. It. Yeah, it's easy peasy. Question in the Yes. Back. Have you considered properties outside of Texas? Uh, sure, why not? The numbers have to make sense. If they do, then I have no problems. And you're passive in some that are outside. And of yes, I am passive in some. Ah. <laughs> um, but yeah, but to to sell, why why not? It just the numbers do have to make sense, though. Yeah, when we went to Phoenix, you told me to buy an apartment. Oh my God, yes, I loved Phoenix, and I was like, <laughs> babe, let's buy your property here. <laughs> But no, we There's didn't. There's a question way in the back. Oh, don't they? Oh, hello. Does the in-house team include maintenance or just rehab? Yes, ish. You know, they have. There's. There. There. We want to utilize our teams with their skill set. If a guy can do drywall, I don't want him to do a make ready unless the make ready needs some type of drywall work. But I, yes, essentially, ish, ish. <laughs> General maintenance, I do have another person that can do those things. Yeah, I mean, you know, we have that team in place and then each one has their role. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you mean by rinse and repeat? We have a template. Okay, the question was, um, how do I put the, the units together, right? Do it this way. Ask the audience out here, what color we paint the outside of our building? See if they know. Oh, That's okay. Right. All right, David wants to know. Right. Yes, I guess. Go ahead. <laughs> Stone Mason Gray and Red Doors, although we've changed a little bit, but safety. 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 Ooh, go Sylvia. <laughs> Extra credit. But inside, interior wise, um, it, we, we do, like I said, we have that standard template where that team knows once everything's done, the next the next set of people are going to come and they're going to do the paint and it's going to be that specific color and then they're going to do the surround the tile and then they're going to do the flooring so it's all in order and they all know it's the same 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 pretty much yep, yep. there's again it looks great so why mess with success they can have any color apartment they want as long as it's gray <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions out there, guys? Anything else online, Tim? Just one more. Alan is asking, when you started out with single family, did you self-manage those? Do you self-manage all your properties? How do you do that? <clears throat> well, when we first started, we bought a single family, and David ran everything. Remember, I stayed in the military. I did had no desire to do this. Uh, so he did everything. So yeah, he self-managed it, as well as the property out in Houston, the 30 unit, 29 unit in Houston. Mm -hmm. But yep. But then he started. He was a lead, did lead some lead deals, and then finally, when I decided 
on my own terms, not him pushing me. Um, when I finally decided, then I started self-managing, and that's how we became IROs. Well, remember when you took over a couple of properties? I think it's powerful. You're a nurse, but I'm scared, and I wasn't allowed to mention you. Oh, God, no. I can't ha listen to my husband. Explain how you one year. Oh. When I find, uh, so when I first started, like I said, it was a fourplex. And I, I, like, I, no lie, I was so nervous that when I collected the rent, I had a book. It was the receipt book. And I, 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 he was there, and I go, honey, what are I right here? And then he's like, it says names, stupid. Like, <laughs> like, I was so nervous, and I was like, why am I freaking out? It's just a stupid piece of paper. But I was so, so nervous. Um, but once I... You know, you break that ice and you learn, you educate yourself, you enrich yourself with other people's experiences. Then I was like, oh, okay, I want that. So he gave, he gave me the 14 unit. And then I got another four unit and then an eight unit and a nine unit. And by that time, this was all within one year. And I'm still working full time at the VA at Audie Murphy. And I didn't realize that I was having so much fun. I ended up retiring myself because I replaced my income as a nurse. So I had exceeded actually. It, I made I had made over a hundred thousand dollars in that within a year time frame just doing all that. So wow. it was super. Like I said, it was empowering because I never realized that I I was capable of doing such a thing. That's Anything awesome. else? Am I good? Can we get one more round of applause for Karen? Yeah. <laughs>